Welcome to the Anakazi Online Banking Conversation, Episode 9. Our topic today is competition and consumer rights during COVID-19. We are pleased to have our guest, Mr. Chilufia Sampa, who is the Executive Director of the CCPC. My name is Walwita Luwabelo. I'm the Chief Compliance Officer of Standard Bank, Zambia Limited. Mr. Sampa, welcome. Mr. Sampa, welcome. Thank you very much and thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you. Now, Mr. Sampa, as uh, we've uh, already explained to the viewers, you are the head of the CCPC. Tell us a little about the commission, when it was established and uh, what is its role? Okay, the CCPC, uh, which is the acronym for Competition and uh, Consumer Protection Commission, uh, was established in uh, 1997. Uh, this is uh, after an Act of Parliament was passed in 1994. Uh, it was called the Competition and Fair Trading Act. That was the first act. That established the CCPC uh, later on in 2010. Uh, it was changed to Competition and Consumer Protection uh, Act. And that's what created the, the, the CCPC. So what is its role? Its role really is to regulate markets. Um, if you go back in history, you'll see, uh, you'll notice that um, we had a command economy before the uh, 1991 elections when we came in with a free market economy. The command economy did not require an institution such as ours because the economy was basically held in the hands of government. But um, when we moved to a private sector-led economy, you needed to have a regulator that would ensure that um, uh, the private sector do not take advantage uh, of, um, of, 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 of the consumers or even of the regulations. And, 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 that, and as a result, what you have is a CCPC, which is there to regulate competition and also to, to ensure that consumers are protected from traders. Very informative. Now, how has been your experience during this COVID period? I mean, as an individual and as the members of staff, what has been the experience? The experience uh, has been quite different mm -hmm. in that um, personally, uh, I have been working throughout. Is it? That is uh, because immediately you have a, an emergency such as the COVID-19. What, what you see is that some traders, unscrupulous traders want to take advantage of the situation. So it has uh, um, sort of forced us to carry out more inspections to ensure that uh, the products that are on the shelves, the products that uh, people are buying um, are safe. Uh, it has forced us to ensure that people, you know, people took advantage of the shortages that were there. So you saw a, a spike in the, in the prices. So you wanted to ensure that those price increases were not as a result of just people taking advantage of the situation, but because of economic factors. Um, so that is what has happened on the competition side. Uh, personally, in terms of my children being at home, that was good. Uh, we tended to interact more and um, uh, having, you know, helping them to do their homework which mm. I doubt I did a good job because I think I can fail my grade 7 now. The <laughs> syllabuses have changed so much. Uh, but it gave me uh, an insight of what they are doing and what they are learning uh, much better than before. That's very interesting. Let me latch on to that uh, issue that you raised about uh, excessive pricing. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a concept that probably you, uh, we've heard it in other circles, price gouging and just excessive pricing. How was the experience? What were the results of your investigations? And what did the commission do about it? Um, you see, excessive pricing falls in the realm of what we call uh, abuse of dominance. Um, what, what actually happened is a bit different because for you to actually find someone to, be, to have abused their dominance, they need to, have, uh, they need to be in a dominant position right. of market power. Now, to be in a dominant position in, of market power, it means you need to have a market share of at least 30%, or three companies put together what we call collective dominance, uh, having a market share of about 60%. Now, what you saw in the crisis 
is, um, for example, pharmacies uh, increasing the prices of uh, hand sanitizer uh, or f uh, hand wash. And that becomes a bit difficult because pharmacies are so many in, 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 the, in the city of Lusaka. If I take Lusaka as a market, there are so many in the city of Lusaka. So it becomes a bit difficult to actually say this is abuse of dominance because um, the way abuse of dominance works is that when you are in a dominant position and you are able to exercise what we call market power, you can act independent of your customers, your competitors, and anyone else, even your stakeholders. And, um, and the only way you can sort of deal with that in competition is to have other competing uh, companies. But in this case, there are so many, and they all have little market shares. So we then realized that actually our act wasn't well equipped to deal with this crisis in terms of that uh, price gouge. So what we did was to engage with our ministry, the Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry, and we suggested some uh, changes to our legislation. And not just our legislation, but even on the Sale of Goods Act, there is a provision where you can maybe pass an SI, uh, which would have then allowed us to uh, uh, deal with, with the case. Uh, fortunately enough, um, before... We did, we did send out warnings, uh, warning letters and, and, and in the press as well. But uh, we have seen that things seem to have come to, 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 to normal. Interesting. Um, others would have argued to say, couldn't you have used general powers, for instance, and uh, collusion or cartel behavior away from dominance to deal with such a situation? Well, because you say you see, because then the the issue would have been excessive pricing. Excessive pricing falls under the provisions of abuse of dominance. So that could not have been the case. When we go to catalytic behavior, um, then now we needed to prove because catalytic be, uh, behavior is criminalized, and because it is criminalized, then we need to prove beyond reasonable doubt, and you know that is a very high standard. Um, it would have been difficult for us to actually prove that these pharmacies had agreed. Uh, let me just put it that this is a crisis. It, has, it is unprecedented. It has never happened before. Uh, competition authorities uh, all over were grappling to, to deal with it. Those that did, did uh, I know like the Kenyan authority uh, dealt with uh, something like that. I think the South African authority dealt with that. But those were relying on their legislation, which already provided for such things. Um, one of the provisions that both the uh, South African and the Kenyan uh, 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 authorities relied on is, is what is known as unconscionable conduct. And that is the provision that they used. Uh, for us, we don't have that provision within our act, and so we couldn't use that. Interesting, but it's good to hear that something is being done. We also noticed you released some uh, guidance notes on phishing, online uh, services to clients during this COVID-19 period. Yes. Please shed more light uh, on that issue. Yes, so, so you see, the, the way COVID affected the consumers uh, was that... Um, with the lockdown, not, not many people were, there was this discourage, basically people were discouraged to go and um, physically go and buy certain things. And of course, uh, what the consumers now did was to start relying on online purchases. We saw that, we saw the, an, an increase of people actually going online and trying to use the um, uh, virtual and, and online purchases and, and dealing more with uh, the internet. And what we started seeing now was that people started taking advantage of the fact that a lot, of more, a lot more people were using the online services. And, um, uh, and, and then people would come up with scams uh, to defraud consumers. Um, you know, COVID-19 emergency fund, so to speak. Uh, if you do A, B, C, D, or you send us our bank details, we'll send you some money. Uh, and then consumers, some of course fell for it and others were skeptical. So we felt we needed to uh, sort of educate them uh, well in advance to ensure 
that they do not fall prey to, to these scams. And this is why we started uh, issuing those guidelines. That's very interesting. Let's move away from the consumer a bit. Let's look at the market players. Yes. Uh, we saw the central bank coming up with a package, a relief package. Yes. Were there any interventions for the market players uh, from uh, your commission? From the commission side, uh, we realized that a lot of businesses uh, lost uh, cash flow income because uh, with the president's measures and the Ministry of Health measures, we saw, especially in the tourism sector, uh, a lot of cancellations, uh, weddings, um, kitchen parties were cancelled, um, uh, workshops were cancelled. Uh, you are a lawyer, Lars was supposed to have had its uh, a annual general meeting, I think, uh, that was cancelled. Uh, the accountants, they, that was cancelled. So a lot of these events that would ordinarily take place were cancelled. So we knew that the businesses didn't have a lot of money because they were expecting these monies, but they did not uh, get the, the monies. So what we did is that if a business, what we, uh, if a business is, has violated the Competition Act in one way or the other, we were then amenable to say, okay, fine, um, you, you can pay in installments. You, we are giving them a moratorium uh, of uh, engaging with us and suggesting how they would pay over a period of time. Um, some would suggest three months, others would suggest more than three months and so on. And would be alive to the fact that, yes, businesses are not doing well at the, at the moment. Then... Also, when you look at the consumers and the way they're dealing with the traders, um, you've cancelled your, your, your wedding and you've paid a deposit at this uh, particular hotel or whatever it may be, events uh, manager or something like that. Uh, and of course, the consumer would want to get back the money as quickly as possible. So we would want to see a win-win situation because we know that the business is in uh, uh, dire stress. Their, their cash flow is not as good as it was because of the, all these bans and we would, in, we would engage, the, we would be arbiters and we would try and engage and say, look, uh, they are not, it's not that they don't want to pay you. It's just that they are currently having um, uh, cash flow problems as a result of the COVID-19. So maybe you can give them a little bit more time for them to pay you back your money. Would you have instead wanted to issue specific COVID-19 relief guidelines, if there were none that were issued? Well, when we looked at our, our act, we felt there was really no reason. Uh, if, apart from ensuring that the uh, traders' cash flow and taking that into consideration, um, we saw no, no real reason why we would give relief to catalytic behavior, for example, uh, which serves no one apart from the people in a cartel. Uh, we saw really no reason to give any guidelines in um, maybe abuse of dominance because this is something that somebody would have, it's almost predetermined. You know exactly what you want to do. So we really looked at our acts and said, okay, how is it that we can help um, the industry? And we found that the, the only way was either you use our current leniency program, uh, our settlement program, or the consent agreement. You can use those and, and, and as well as a deferring payment of fines that, that may be there. That's interesting. There is a particular area where we seem to have uh, noticed some relief given by the Commission on mergers and acquisitions. From your last statistics, we've seen you mention some like you had about, about $38 million investment yes. from uh, mergers and acquisitions in yes. 2019. Yeah. You reduced some fees in that area. Um, how, how has been the impact? No, no, not, not, not necessarily that we reduce the fees. Um, we were considering reducing the fees of major notification. Uh, this is something that has been, uh, that has to change with the statutory instrument. Uh, the Ministry of Commerce, the Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry has to uh, sign that statutory instrument. But it is a proposal. 
our our intention is to ensure that when you are when you are carrying out a, a measure, it should not be burdensome. Currently, I think Zambia's major fees are, are the highest in the world, uh, with a couple of five million kwacha. That is about um, maybe two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. But before the kwacha had lost its value, it was close to half a million dollars. That was the cap. But now. We are basically saying, why don't we uh, ensure that we reduce the cost of doing business uh, by reducing the major notification fees? And uh, so there is a proposal that has gone to the Ministry of uh, Commerce, Trade and Industry. It has not taken effect yet. Yeah, so that's where we are. Now that is something I'm sure the industry will be waiting patiently for. Let me take you back a bit uh, to the complaints that you received um, your last reports show you received uh, north of about 2,000 complaints in 2019. Yes. Tell us some of the themes that usually come out from uh, consumers. Yes, you see, you see with, with the consumers, uh, what we have noticed is that there's a lot of um, Section 49 violations, and that is to do with um, unfit products or defective products. This is a lot of uh, electronic products, telephones, uh, refrigerators uh, and we have come up with uh, an understanding that that is because most of our Zambian standards are not mandatory standards uh, so this is something that um, ourselves uh, Zambia Bureau of uh, Standards and Zambia Compulsory Standards Authority are trying to work out to ensure that we have a lot more of these national standards uh, applying uh, on, uh, on, on the Zambian market. So the majority, probably 50, 40 to 50% of those cases would, be, would fall in that, in that category. Then we have, unfortunately, the financial sector. <laughs> the financial sector, but within the financial sector, I'll, 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 I'll pick out the insurance sector. The insurance sector has a lot of cases as well. And this is, a, uh, this is our investigations has, uh, have come out to be that it's as a result of using agents. And these agents would have um, a commission as part of their salary. So what they do is they go out into the rural areas especially, uh, mostly civil servants. They'll deal with these civil servants. Um, so they will come to you, Mr. Uh, what is your name, and they will get all these details and so on. Then, of course, you tell me eh, that oh, I'm not ready for that policy yet, uh, but then I will say, look, for me, to calculate your, um, for me to calculate your premium, let me just have your details, and I will not pass it when I go back to, to the office. And usually, almost always, what happens is they go and submit your details and say, Mr. Ruabelwa has decided to take up this policy. So the next thing you see is just a reduction in your salary and you're wondering, where is this from? And then you remember that you, st you spoke to one agent uh, or the other and he did not, and you did not give him the permission to go ahead, but he's gone ahead anyway. Then there are also situations where um, you deal with me um, with uh, one insurance company A, um, then I'm fired from this insurance company A, I go to insurance company B, I still have your details. So I go to the insurance company B and give them the details like you have uh, joined them. So the next thing you see is a deduction on your, on your, on your pay slip. So there are a lot of those insurance cases. Uh, uh, PIA, I know, is, is, is coming up with some guidelines on how these um, uh, agents will be dealt with. But um, those were the two major defective products or the retail sector, and the next was the financial sector. Let me bring you to the financial sector, of course, which is something of uh, personal interest. Yes. And we have dealt uh, on several fora when we deal with bank assurance and uh, other blended services. So would you say there is now more enlightenment to the consumer and to the commission on how bank assurance products work? So the, 
Backup assurance is, is a concept that needed to be understood. Uh, I'm not sure we fully understand it as, as, as regulators uh, uh, and whether the customers also fully understand it. Uh, but um, uh, what we have is that is, we have a situation where banks now are having these uh, in-house kind of uh, brokers and, and there is this Chinese war. Uh, and and it's it's that Chinese war that brings problems, and I think uh, if it is porous, then it becomes problematic. If it is not, and we ensure that the Chinese war actually does stand, then uh, on the Commission side we see that that is not a problem at all. But it was that understanding to try and uh, ensure that what is happening on this side is not necessarily influencing that a customer will cross to the other side. Uh, and, and I think uh, our interactions, uh, especially with, uh, with your bank, uh, where that uh, you, you, you provided that, that, that assurance, and uh, we were good with that. But it is going to be on a case-by-case -case basis because we would not necessarily say, uh, just because Stan, Stan Beek has done this, that will be true for other banks. Yeah. And maybe just some comments um, from a banking perspective. Some of the issues and complaints that have come is there is a perception that you are a little harder on uh, players that may uh, fulfill that dominance position. There is more regulation for the bigger banks, mm -hmm. which is a bit unfair for the smaller banks. The other complaint that has come out is the differences in how different regulators perceive issues. Mm -hmm. In short, are there proper handshakes uh, amongst the regulators, which then speaks into the issue of the cost of doing business that you talked about. Yes. Uh, these are consistent concerns that come from, from the industry and from the banking industry. I don't know if you have any comments around that. Yes, I do. And, and, and remember, uh, we were coming from a command economy. Um, a lot of these regulators that you see, ex except the Bank of Zambia, of course, which, were, which has been there since in time immemorial, but a lot of other regulators that you see only came in in the period 1990, 19, maybe 2000, in the new millennium. Uh, some are even being made now, all right? So uh, everyone is trying to find their feet. Uh, the commission is now just slightly over 20 years old. Uh, for the first 10 years, a lot of people didn't even know what the commission was doing, but a lot of what it was doing was advocacy work, trying to get to know uh, what the other people are doing and trying to pick out what the competition issues are, trying to pick out what the con consumer protection issues are in each and every sector. So our, our um, strategy has been to let's... Let's try and uh, formalize our relationships with all the other regulators, which, we, which is what we've done. With, I think we have close to nine uh, memorandum of understanding. And that is to first understand uh, what is happening in a particular industry. And as you understand what is happening in a particular industry, then you also raise your concerns. Because some of the concerns um, that a regulator may not be looking at the way we would look at it. So handshakes are there. It will take a bit of time to ensure that we all are on the same platform and on the same level so that we reduce the cost of doing business. But when you consider competition and when you consider a company that we consider to be dominant, uh, our law requires that this dominant uh, person or this dominant enterprise has a special responsibility not to uh, engage in anti-competitive behavior. And because of that, we tend to have, yes, an extra eye on that person with that dominance because it's very easy for that person to exclude other companies that may want to enter into industry 
and also it is very easy for that person to exploit consumers okay and 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 some of the things that happen um pay tv for example if it went up by 20 dollars what would you do wouldn't you pay would call the call center Jen. <laughs> definitely <laughs> you would pay most likely mm -hmm. you, you see what i'm trying to say uh, and 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 that's because they occupy a certain level of um uh, dominance and market power that whatever they do it's very easy to exploit the customer but i'm not saying they are all i'm saying is that it becomes very easy and that is what a dominant uh, firm does so the bigger the bank the bigger the enterprise the more scrutiny you are likely to to have uh, i think there is a saying in uh, in the there is a saying from eastern province that mutu uh, kakula sule wanyonkonya you see what i'm trying to say so it's, it's the bigger your head any anything that flies will hit your head so it's something that uh, 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 dominant firms ought to know but that's not to mean that us as regulators are not uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that we would want to ensure we reduce the cost of doing business. No, I'm sure I will keep on engaging, uh, but thank you for that clarification. Maybe just to quickly just raise two last issues. Um, the first one is we're an on an Anakazi banking uh, online conversation. Yes. Let's speak to the, the women. women as a special consumer group. Yes. What are the issues that come out uh, to you as a commission? Because as a bank, we are very strong on that. We have got specific products, and we drive a strong theme around that. But from a commission perspective, what usually comes through? What usually comes through is that uh, we've noticed that when we go into the rural areas, it is the women folk that actually are the ones that uh, hold together the family, want to, w w w uh, so to speak. And at the same time, they're the ones that probably generate uh, incomes within those, those those families and um, we've been going out as a commission uh, under the RUFEP, uh, rural finance expansion program trying to raise that awareness that women folk should be uh, onboarded onto the you know, not just banking but financial services uh, uh, and, and that would mean even mobile money uh, banking and so on and so forth we we just want to ensure that a lot more have access to to this you talked about the bank of zambia relief and i think uh, just recently the president was also talking about the 30 million to uh, for the youth but you see all these things will bypass the women if they are not onboarded on financial platforms in one way or the other so it is um, uh, for us We've taken that uh, kind of research and raising awareness to ensure that we onboard as many women as possible onto the financial uh, sector. Very, very nice to hear. Finally, Mr. Sampa, COVID-19 has come through and you as a commission, you've seen the effects. Where do you see the future of competition and consumer protection after COVID-19? The future uh, of competition we have not seen a reduction in the number of majors, um, even though we went through this period of a slowdown and so on. Currently, we are sitting on about um, the first quarter, about 30 majors. Um, so we see that probably that will continue. It will not really affect that. Uh, but I think when it comes to the consumer protection side, uh, we, I, I, I think we will see a lot more uh, instances of expired products. You know, people are now a bit sensitive on what they want to buy. Buying the just the essentials, uh, food stuff, and so on. They are not buying the other things that you would ordinarily buy. And uh, we are seeing a lot more expired products that are on the shelves. Uh, uh, and so which means we have to work extra hard to ensure that those expired products are removed from the shelves and people are not exposed to them. So we, we see um, a rebound, though, uh, by, by, by 2021. I think at that time we would have gotten used to the new normal, 
and um, uh, probably we see the, the, the economy again expanding. Sasampa, thank you very much for making time. Uh, we are grateful for your clarifications and this conversation I'm sure has benefited the viewers out there and we will be calling on you uh, surely. Thank you very much and uh, uh, have a good day. Thank you. This has been Anakazi Banking Online Conversation, Episode 9. We hosted Mr. Chilufia Sampa, the Executive Director of the Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. Please look out for Episode 10 and thank you for making time. Mm -hmm.